or, or they say crowdsourcing, but we say the aggregation sourcing. As a man of mine may have an idea and he put it forward on social media and next one's a reason on it. He's not saying his idea is conclusive. But what he's saying is, this seems to be so. And then the next man might yes, say, Yes, family, give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life. Give thanks to Emperor Haile Selassie I, just giving you a taste of the Rabbi Rasai Adonis, who was with us in a previous Tiger's Temple that was Sunday past. And of course, you know, this evening we are meeting again for the Tiger's Temple. This one is going to be a serious sit down. I'm looking for all the ones to be in there tonight. Rastafari, the Bible and ancient Egypt. Mm -hmm. Of course, this will be a lecture presentation this evening and I will be the presenter. It's going to be a joy. Looking forward. Just bring your questions, bring your comments. I'm talking about the 3rd of July. Remember, of course, regularly to come into the temple is only $10 in the contribution, but of course, $20 on the day. But if you just throw $5 extra on that, you have a whole month's pass to come into the Tigers a Temple. So we're going to listen to a bit of what the, the good Ras was saying with us. Rastafari sabbatical in our previous sit down. Yes, we were talking about all things Bible. We have been doing some wonderful programs on the Bible itself, you know, for the, for the last programs or previous programs on the Tigers Temple. Of course, we have had some wonderful visitors, Rasai Cern, Jose Heru, as I said, even good brother, brother Cypher Selassie joined us previous at Tiger's Temple. And of course, brother Cypher, I will be reaching out to you. We definitely have to do another sit down again on the YouTube and even in the temple. I mean, the temple is where the scholars meet, family. The temple is a real temple and eh? real sparring and real knowledge and real information. And that is why I myself, I am delighted this evening to be coming in to give you this wonderful presentation. I, I don't think you uh, know what to expect, you know. I, I know we always talk of Haile Selassie, Rastafari, ancient Kemet Bible, yeah, yeah, yeah. But of course, we are advancing the discussion. So just make sure you prep yourself for some new information and some new vibration from I and I as we step into this one here this evening. So what I'm going to do, we're going to continue to take in a bit of, of Ras I Adonis, in the previous Tiger's Temple. I, I was just seeing that, or oh, he has another experience and this is how we build. It's about building, you know? And therefore the subject matter about Rastafari in the Bible, I think what is often missing is that some of us were traumatized. I wasn't one who was, but I do know of many who testified to us of their experience, they were traumatized. You know, like the fire and brimstone, hell and damnation and going to Satan or hell or someplace and getting molested by the devil forever. And that, like, you know, like that South Park, I don't know if you've seen it or the audience seen it, but like the South Park mm -hmm. episode, you know what I mean? And though we may laugh at it, for some people, there's no laughing matter. You know what I mean? Some people were beat into believing. And then when those of us who might say the Bible, say the Bible and say Hala Selassie, say the Bible, the next thing we have to recognize is that the Ethiopia and the Israelites of Ethiopia and the true church and the perfecting church, the Tawahido church, and that whole culture there has a different historical experience and cultural relationship to this than what we have experienced over the past 400 plus years. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if we don't take into account the elders, though they wasn't talking about this like we are, I recognize the reason why there was that discipline was so that this would not happen. They had that sort of reasoning where I recall some of the parts I remember now and mine and mine were going hot, but it was all love. It was, you know what I mean? And then later on, our next mind, go, like we reason it, you go against what me say about this or that. And I try to prove it, but we finally just, you know, love and we go, yeah. our way and then later on i find myself doing something else and i'm like chant it come to mind i have to call you up get you on the horn and say yo brother you're right but that can only happen if we have that you know what i mean that love and goodwill amongst i and i so i say that not because i think that the bible is not a part of rastafari but i say that because when his majesty say the bible that perspective is 180 degree opposite 
of what we by and large have experienced. And if we don't take that into consideration, it's like when the Bible say, the world will know who are my disciples by how much love they have one for another. You know what I mean? And if we don't have enough love for our next brother or sister who come forward and they may be like, we're not in the Bible. <laughs> you know what I mean? We have to sit them down and say, yo, what's a guan? You know what I mean? Maybe they need triage. Maybe they need the love. Isn't that what it's all about? The Bible is talking about all these principles that we're supposed to be living out. Mm -hmm. So this is an opportunity for us to live it out, even in discussion of the Bible. So I'm saying as one who might be pointed to as, you know, one of the main ones talking about Rastafari and the Bible and the Torah and, and, and the King James Version, the Schofield. But, you know, we'd be talking a lot about the Bible, but it's because of what Madison says for us to read and study the Bible to find the truth for ourselves and to add to that biblical knowledge, you know, that biblical knowledge, secular knowledge, you know, other knowledge that can help us to put these biblical things into context. So I just want to say that point thing about the Bible because um, I heard a sister, I want to heal her up if I can on your platform. I think you was on her platform as well, Nigis Saba. Sister Nigis Saba, I think blue blue frequency i think she has a platform and um me and her were seeking to reason hopefully we will but in our chat like on messenger you know our perspectives about things and i saw a video she did for next brother and they were just going i said they were going ham they were going ham ham you know ham in hebrew mean hot you know ham means hot so we say today you go ham on somebody right you go like ham sham japheth ham on yeah, somebody yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was going to hot ham on the Bible, but I actually, my wife was watching it and I listened to it and actually I kind of agree. I know this was shock ones because I can defend what we can defend, but um, I heard a one say, when you preach or minister to person, you don't minister just to the person, but you minister to the soul. You have to kind of try to connect with the person that you actually are speaking to so you can see what from your knowledge or experience or awareness can be helpful to them you're not just giving them like off the shelf you know you got to almost like tailor your, the truth that you know to reach them and sometimes you can only commiserate with them you know what i mean you can only say yeah chan if i had that experience too i i, I get it I, I didn't grow up under that kind of influence you know what i mean right. but i that point there about like the Bible and um, I think we have to have more more understanding for our brothers and sisters because some really grew up like I mentioned in the Tiger's Nest like the Carrie like the Carrie example the Carrie movie where the mother was a white racist supremacist white bees with biblical nut jar you know what I mean and some of our black people also get that nuttery in, in their heads too you see what I'm saying. So it's just about being truthful about this approach to it. So the Bible is like fire. It can be used to warm a baby bottle and, and God forbid, it can be used to burn a baby too. You see you know what I'm saying? So it mm. depends on how it's used, you know, and in whose hand it's used. So by looking at Ethiopia and Hala Selassie's testimony, both in word and deed and studying Ethiopia, that actually made me really seriously start to read the Bible. I went to church. My mother, a Pentecostal lady, she took me to church. My father, I probably read more of the Quran in Arabic and understood it than I did of the Bible. You know what I mean? I only read the Bible to try to understand what the Quran might be talking about. You know what I'm saying? But it was only with Haile Selassie and studying Ethiopia and the Israelite connection of Ethiopia, because I don't know if I know, but I was on, at a level running with the Israelites back in the 80s and 90s. Mm. You know, I had that experience. That, that was one of my experiences. So while running with the Israelites over here, I would go to Bingy, right, Bingy over there. But I was still trying to figure out, well, who is Haile Selassie for myself? And what, what's this Judah and line of Judah and Israelite and Ark of the Covenant connection? And that's what caused me to then follow what his majesty said to read the Bible and to, 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 to know the truth, to learn the truth for the oneself. That's what inspired me on this route of the Bible. But it wasn't going to church. I went to church. It was a nice, it was a nice, nice thing to do. It was, it was enjoyable being the pastor's son. But the Bible was never imposed on me. 
like you had to accept Jesus or make the altar call or you're going to go to hell. But I heard of ones, even my mother and other ones that told me testimonies of people. I heard testimonies where people say the reason why they are Christian is because he heard the pastor preaching about hell and damnation and they didn't want to go there. I said, Chan, becoming more conscious, I said, I'm happy that's not me. Word to God, there go I. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't have that sort of experience. But some of our brothers and sisters who are Rastafari may have had, and many did have, experiences like that. So when they are not so quick to embrace the Bible or Jesus or Christ or whatever, whether the Holy Spirit say it or not, we have to go deeper. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Go deeper into, well, what was, what, you know, how was it when you grew up? What's your experience? You know what I mean? And sometimes we can't change what people experience. But if we come in the same love of the king, you know, the king, he encountered. Yeah. Okay. With the, with the emotional aspect aside, the emotional aspect is, as you said, everyone would have come through a different experience. Some mm. people may be shell-shocked. Some people may be once bitten, twice shy and all of that. But everybody doesn't really even... You know, um, a person could be, no, that's not the best example. Let me not use that one. Um, uh, okay, a person could be once bitten and it's not twice shy. They, they'll walk back into the same fire where in someone else, because they almost drowned, they'll never go back in the water already. again. I mean, I, I personally, I almost drowned already. And I, I never ever thought about not going back into the sea water. It never even dawned on me. This may have been the first time I ever related that event that happened to me and me somehow thinking not to go back in the seawater. But another person mm. would, would say, hey, me, no way, never again. Mm. So, so taking that mm. emotional aspect, but just looking at the reality you know, of, of the Bible, because you mentioned the good sister, um, Negis, uh, uh, Seba. Saba. Saba. Saba, yeah. Mm. And um, well, I heard you say that you actually agreed with the conversation i didn't hear it but of course i would have followed you know her outlooks on the bible and even the 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 the, the video that we did previously uh, i didn't see any comment for for her if I, I i don't think i did anyway but i know for sure brother was there heru he did comment and he he was asking how is it that you don't believe in julius caesar but you believe in Moses and Abraham, and, and I, I think he used another name. And I know for <laughs> sure that that good sister is, mm. is definitely on that very same level. And, and what I'm saying, not highlighting her really now, what I'm saying, I'm Virgin, and I'm going to give it back to Mike now. Now, there are different outlooks of this, especially as Rastafari. That is why, as I said, when you were coming in, the programs that we've been doing, we've been trying our best to look at the, the Bible as we know it on different levels. You know, some of us have some very gun ho headstrong opinions. And with all due respect, we haven't even studied like the origin of the Bible. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, everybody don't know everything, you know. But what I'm saying, some of us, we have some, again, I'll repeat some gun ho headstrong, get out my way opinions. When in our reality, we're not equipped enough with um, enough information to actually make a mm. rational decision. Your mm. gun ho headstrong decision may somehow be right too, but you did not come to that conclusion because you came to a rational sit down and say, okay, let me look at all the aspects thereof. So in other words, mm. in other words, and that's our job, you know, myself and yourself and others, mm. is to bring a certain level of knowledge to the people. But in our reality, a lot of us, never went into no study about no Septuagint. You know, if you ask the regular ones of I and I where the Bible came from, that would not come up in the conversation. Not mm -hmm. that is an oversight. They just don't know nothing about that. Straight up, no disrespect. Now, why I'm saying all of this is to, and that's another aspect of looking at how a one is led to the Bible. So mm. they have a deg the degree of acceptance of the Bible. Okay, they have a degree where a person does, they do not accept it. They consider mm. that those that will clearly tell you 
it is a European of European origin for whatever reason, whether they have researched that or they just believe that. Some of that mm. may come out of the, the, again, the emotions that you were speaking of. But now there are those who are may look at it more analytical and say, well, listen, brother, um, the Bible is a good book, etc. I don't see it as the book and the holy book, but because the stories within it are very allegorical. A next person would tell you, well, listen, man, the Bible is the truth. And it's historically truth. Historically the truth. But I don't deal with the New Testament. I only <laughs> deal with the Old Testament. Then someone else will come and tell you, no, man, you have to deal with the New Testament, man, because the Jesus Christ, he's a real man. So you believe in Christ, yeah, man, Jesus Christ. Yeah, man, Jesus Christ is a real mm -hmm. man, okay? He born from a virgin? No, man, that's a, just a symbol. He, he wasn't really born from a virgin. It's just a symbol. But the next Rasta man will tell you, I believe in Jesus Christ too. And he was born from a virgin. And he did die. And he rise back up on the third day. Now, you see two, two believers in Jesus Christ, believers in New Testament, believers in the Bible. But one tell you, no, he didn't really. He, his mother is Joseph's wife. And they... They copulated to make him. And next man will tell you, no, man, read it there. You have to, you, and they go for the scripture where Joseph was, was ready to put away his wife. I said, well, look at there. Remember you say, believe in the Bible. Now look at there. Joseph was ready to put away his wife, you know. So now you have so many different outlooks on this. Mm -hmm. It's not just about <laughs> who believe or who don't believe or who accept and who don't accept. Because there are those who literally don't accept it because they believe it is an infiltration into the black psyche. Very mm, patriotic and, and um, chauvinist, uh, uh, male chauvinist, keep down to the woman, many aspects. And even you go into the Bible, there's certain aspects of it that, to me, if an next person disagree, that's them. I, I'm not gonna pretend I don't see. There's certain aspects that give this strong impression like, wow, that's harsh on the woman. Straight up, maybe a next person may come and try to polish it up and, and explain it to I. But then, and, and, and here, I'm not on trial here. I'm just telling you how it looks. I, I have the answers for all of this. I'm just telling the person how it would look to maybe the untrained eye when they read a, a scripture that clearly tell you um, the woman is not subjected to, to preach. She can't teach nobody nothing. She must learn in silence. And a person may be strongly offended in that. So with all of that into the pot cake, Sure. All that stir that in okay. and stir it up. <laughs> when a young, when a youth come to you and say, Rasta man, I, I mm. like Rastafari, right now, but somehow I'm going to check for the Bible. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> oh. Wow, 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 wow. Heavy, heavy load, bro. Oh. Heavy, heavy load. <laughs> well, that's you what we think. It. You stack it, you stack it. Uh, yeah. Uh, How do we move those, those building blocks of the pyramid? Wow. Was it actually stone or was it geopolymers? No. But um, here's no. what I'll say to that one right there. Um, but what do you know about the Bible? Like, what do you know about the Bible? I would want to, uh, personally, if I have the time to reason or I make the time to reason, I want to get their perspective. I want to get their perspective. Because I know I can come from a lot of different angles. I can even agree with some of the things, even like you say. Like the one who says uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus, uh, born of a virgin, and others say no, Joseph was his physical father, actual literal father, you know. And one will say, well, nobody can be born of a virgin because it doesn't happen. Look at me, my father and my mother. So mixing apples and oranges, and I only ask for citrus fruit, is not helpful. You follow me on that mixing apples and oranges, and I only ask for citrus fruit. If you say, go to the store, give me, get me some citrus fruit, and they come back, bring you a bunch of red apples and yellow apples and green apples and some grapes. <laughs> that means they don't understand what citrus, what, what, what is, this? what makes citrus different? You know what I mean? So if a young Rastafari came forward and say, well, they check for Rastafari, but they're not really check for the Bible. I think that one of the first thing is I would like to know well, what was their experience like what was their experience like how they grew up what what they what do they know about the Bible what do they believe for or against the Bible I, either way 
You know what I mean? I will try to look at it, like you say, analytically, or I like to use the word objectively. I'll try to take an objective perspective. But then now, if they know, if, since since you asked me that, and I am there, and they come to you and say, okay, well, Russ, first of all, listen, I take my time and do my study. I, I number one, I don't believe Moses exists because the Bible says Moses write about his own death. Now, how am I going to write about his own death? And then he tell you that he opened his hand and then and then he opened the Red Sea and passed through. Nothing can go so. And you see that whole Bible thing, it, it's a book against Africans. You don't see how the how the God come down on Egypt and come down on Babylon. Trust the man we born Babylon and Babylon is a black people. That's Suma. That's one of the creators of civilization, Rastaman. How are you supposed to like that book? Okay, okay. It's a Rastaman we're talking about, right? It's a Rasta, a Rasta Somebody Babylon. looking coming into the faith and because remember, you know, okay, it's them, okay. it's them, it's them so, young ones coming into the faith that's challenged. To that, and I to that, to that very said thing that I said, if they come with something like that. Well, as you said it, this is the initial irate, the small still voice said, deaf to black and white down presser. Mm -hmm. Suma ancient black, deaf to black and white down presser. All right. In other words, in other words, see, this whole white suprem white racism, white supremacy is, is much deeper. There's a spiritual wickedness of it too, where outside of this, white man comes and he says, Oh, look, there's Noah, there's Shem, Ham, and Japheth. But then he flips it around and says, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. You know, he appeals to, to this lie. The lie is wrapped in the lie. So Ham, Shem, and Japheth, or biblically speaking, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. One was, one was white, one was black, one was nondescript. Now, who taught us that? Does the Bible teach us that? If you read the Bible just for yourself, does the Bible say that one was black, one was white, and one was nondescript, maybe gray, or maybe maybe it was Asian, maybe not. You know, does the Bible say that? No, the white man in his times, as it says, the times of the Gentile, we could say 1776, we could go back to earlier period, the Roman period, in a time when other peoples, the last of all world ruling people came up on the scene, right? What they did with religion, with belief systems that were pre-existing was they rewrote it. They rewrote it for their benefit. You know what I mean? For their benefit. So when we start to talk about things about the Bible, for example, what you mentioned, well, we don't believe in Moses. He wasn't a real person. How many people wrote books and the book was published after their death? How many people wrote almost entire books? Maybe didn't complete it, right? Or even when they did complete it, somebody else came along and added. This stuff that's written in ancient Egypt, I've been studying deeply, even more so. I'm trying to master the hieroglyphs and the heretic, you know, as well. Um, there's manuscripts in Egypt that we say for the Bible, and some of these manuscripts may be before and have been written before the time, historical time of the Bible, right? But even it wasn't written by the person, somebody else wrote it, they copied it from somebody else, they added some things, they found these two, three different manuscripts, and he said these manuscripts don't agree, the Book of the Dead, and this one it has 100 something chapters, and that one it has 145 chapters, and next one it might have, a, what's the largest amount of chapters, 160 something chapters, so I could always say that this is not one thing, look, it's not, it's consistent, you see what I'm saying, so using those particular points, those points that most people use against the Bible nowadays are atheist, um, liberal, tax and spend, godless, liberal, agenda points. What I'm trying to say is that the first book I really read oh, and studied. Well, well. Sorry, say that again. They're what? Liberal. Say, say that again. I, I, they are, they are uh, uh, tax and spend, free choice, uh, tax and spend, pro choice, godless liberals. It, it's for these white folks that climbed up during the 60s to the 70s when they gave us freedoms and civil rights, civil rat race, civil rights, when they included us in the system, have you noticed that the black power movement on the rails and then white liberals now teach our children things pro-black. And a lot of these white liberals tend to be Luciferian Jews that have problems with their own Jewish uh, Christian faith. And now they're the ones now like the, like the Black Lives Matter movement. Who is that movement funded by? George Soros, right? Now look at the hypocrisy. The woman and everything that did that thing, the so-called pro-black or 
not to get into their sexual orientations or disorientations, but they went and bought property in a white neighborhood and all these kind of things. I'm saying, look at these contradictions that have come in when other people now are teaching our people in the movement. There's a point about the whole Moses thing and about the other thing and about this thing. But you know what I find? I know where all these points come from. The first book I really studied when I wanted to prove the Bible for myself, when as Matthew says, yes, Jesus Christ, born of a virgin, um, he, he crucified, died, and resurrected at, according to the scripture. When I heard Halas Selassie say, according to the scripture, that's like that little thing that like legally that you put, like I say, 